Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Every wide receiver in the NFL wants to be a top target, and two players will be trying to be that today. It's the Packers going up against the Panthers. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Larry, with a beautiful skyline towering just to the right of us, you get a look inside Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. A short time ago, a scene that never fails to stir up the folks here in Charlotte. Cam Newton strutting his way onto the field. His guys are fired up as they get set to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Green Bay Packers. Hello, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gaughan. As we get set here, Charles, we talk about wide receivers. You know, Larry mentioned it in the open. But that's a big spot to look at here in this one. I think you identified it perfectly because these guys have such an impact on the game nowadays because they throw the ball more than ever. And whether they're throwing it short, medium, or long, can they snatch it out of the air and create even extra yardage with run after catch? The veteran kicker, Mason Crosby, set to do the honors here. And off we go from uptown Charlotte. This is taken about seven yards deep. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. So here are the Panthers now for their opening drive. They'll be brought out by their seventh-year man out of Auburn, the 2015 NFL MVP. It's Cam Newton. That word focus is used so often in the NFL, and I think that in this case, the word refocus will come to mind when you think about Cam Newton. 15 wins in a Super Bowl appearance after the 2015 season. Last year, just six wins. I think Cam comes back with a whole new dedication and a new way of doing things, moving the ball around and maybe the running backs a little bit more instead of carrying it himself. On first down, it's Newton. They find some open field here. And oh, right away, he lost the football. And the Packers pick it up. Then he will bring it back to about the 11 yard line. And for how much Cam handles the football, he really doesn't fumble a whole lot, but coughed it up there. And I know that a lot of people seeing that play, they immediately go back to the Super Bowl against Denver and Von Miller knocking it free from Cam. But I think you're exactly right. One of the underrated aspects of his game, he's fundamentally sound when he carries the football. Whether he's in the pocket or actually running it, he usually does a great job of taking care of it. He'll have to shake that one off. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And a great spot to start this drive from here. Here's the rookie from UTEP, Aaron Jones. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. Five yards to go for the offense. First down and goal from that five-yard line. They come out here in the eye. After the penalty, it's Jones. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. He'll drop to throw. 
And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. This defense has held on so far. Now from the three, this is third and goal. They'll look to throw here. And almost intercepted. Would have been a huge pick in the end zone, but as it stands, that brings up fourth. Brandon, some of those windows that tell the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. Now Mason Crosby for the Packers field goal try. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goalposts. And the Packers are off to a 3-0 lead. So they recover the fumble but could not take advantage of the short field. They do get three. And no one ever turns down three points going up on the board. But the offense will go to the sidelines wondering what if... While the defense on the other side, they'll celebrate holding them to just a field goal after giving up such bad field position. After the main field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Here come the Panthers now, set to take over on offense. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when they only give up the field goal? <laughs> And they were able to trot back out on the field to start this drive. A little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think Coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield, punch in the end zone without turning it over. Newton on first down. And the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. Nick Perry coming in from that outside linebacker spot to bury him for a loss of seven. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. They'll run. This is Jonathan Stewart, and he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. 12 yards is the pick up there, and they're going to have a third down. It seemed like the situation was second and a mile to go for a first down, which screams what? Throw the football. you got to pass in order to try to pick up that kind of yardage. But in this case, they ran a tendency breaker because the tendency is for defenses to be out there and be set up for a pass. So you break tendency and actually run the football. That changes everything because if you're able to find a crease, you often have bigger guys working against smaller guys downfield. They picked up excellent yardage there to bring up a third down. From the gun on third down, Newton. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. Call it a gain of three, and that'll bring up fourth down. I think the training and practice broke down on that play because he simply didn't run the route deep enough to get to the first down marker, despite what was a really nice catch and toe tap on the sideline. Well, that's third down 101. You got to go to the marker, know where it is. Pilardi now on to punt as he sends this one away. This is taken at the 15. 12 yards on the return that time. And that will come the offense as they take over. 
The Packers offense now heading back out onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. They'll start out on the ground with Jones. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Looking to throw. And an alley to run. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. It's a gain of six on the play, and they're going to face a third down. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And Adams has it, complete. And he gets this one across midfield for the first down to the 46. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. They'll run it now out of the gun. And some room to work. Pass the 20. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. A great effort there. 46 yards. And the Packers add on to their lead. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. A drive there of just four plays. And a pretty good run there in the end to top it off. Crosby on now to kick it away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And he probably should have stayed in the end zone as he'll muster a return up to only the 14-yard line. Well, conventional football, football 101, tells us if you don't get it back to the 20-yard line on a kickoff return, that's a disappointment. But some of these teams, special teams coaches, with approval by the head coach, they give them full authority to go ahead and bring it out and try to be aggressive. Almost what we call the green light, red light theory. Green light means go, red light means stop. Looks like he had green on that play. They'll run it now out of the gun. 
And a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. When we look at this unit like we are now, Greg Olson has become such a reliable target in this league. Loves to be considered the number one option in the passing game in the offense he plays, and he lives up to it. Knows the defense is set for him, knows how to beat them. Second and five. Out of the gun, Newton. And it's hauled in by Ed Dixon. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves his sticks. There's many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. This is Stewart, and not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. And let's get a look at the Green Bay defense. Mike Daniels is often underrated as a big-time defensive player in the NFL, but the Packers know his value. Short in stature, but that leverage advantage that he has allows him to get upfield, get underneath offensive blockers, and make plays in the backfield. In addition, very strong at the point of attack. A big-time weightlifter. Got that from his dad, a former powerlifter. And ready now for second and nine. Draw play, Newton to Stewart. Able to shake free for about seven up to the 35. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with the draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? Well, you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are on the field and they're only thinking one thing, get to the quarterback. And oftentimes you can bypass them with a running play. So they run it on second down. Now let's see what third down brings here for the offense. He can run for it, and he will. Cam Newton all alone. He's at the 30, and all the way down to the 24-yard line. A big-time gain there on the keeper, using his legs to hurt him. First down. And while it's highly unusual for NFL teams to think about using their quarterback on key third-down runs, none of those teams save one has Cam Newton. He's unique, one of the biggest quarterbacks you'll ever see. Give him the ball. Let him pick it up. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. First carry of the game for Christian McCaffrey. And oh, his first carry, he loses the football. And this is going to be Packer football. Well, he's not the starter coming in, getting his first carry off the bench. That's not the way to earn more carries. You have to stay in the game, even if you're not on the field, right? Stay mentally sharp, stay ready. And above all, when you get into the game, hold on to the football. Don't let the other team have it. And now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Now a first down carry by Jones. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Ah, 
Again, it's Jones. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audibled there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through, and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Give him three on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. Now on to kick it away, the rookie from Miami, Justin Vogel. Back deep is Kalen Clay. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here. And last time, the turnover on the fumble, and they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> Down on the scoreboard, had a drive going, had pushed it past the 50-yard line, so they felt they were in striking distance. And to come away with nothing, not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that bad taste out of their mouth here? Now a play fake here on first down. And the tight end Olsen right side. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Second down, here's Newton. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Stewart on the counter, and he's got room. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, it's working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. They go play action here on first down. And he's got some space here. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. first down and some space here and heavy contact he is knocked down hard right near the 27 another nice gain 13 yards that time and another first down
Newton turns and hands to Stewart. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Yeah, that was a safety that came through and made the play. But there's no doubt in my mind, he hits like a linebacker. And we see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time, we do indeed a big hit for a loss. And we will not see another play as time has run out on this first quarter. Plenty of scoring here already. We're back to Uptown Charlotte after this timeout. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. With my good friend Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon with you. It's the Panthers in possession of the football as we begin quarter number two. But they face a second and long to start things out. And here comes play number six on this drive. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves his sticks. Now, that's how you start to get back in the good graces of your head coach. Remember, he fumbled on the last possession. How about the faith they showed him, giving him the ball again, and he repaid on picking up a first down. his way forward here for a good little game. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. They keep it on the ground again to Stewart. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it leads to a first and goal. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that plan any down. of humanity that guided him to that spot. Yeah, they got there, but I love the dive. Always a fan of the dive. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. A 10-play drive that time, and it's capped off by a Jonathan Stewart run. to kick this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. 
The Packer offense now ready to get back onto the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. Then they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. A give to Jones, and he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. they got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. The Packers on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and five. Now back to throw. He's got his target. It's Cobb. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Many teams, as soon as they spot man defense, if they haven't called a hitch, they'll get to it as fast as they can. They want to put the ball in the hands of one of their best playmakers and hope that he can break a tackle on the outside and go for big yardage. A give to Jones running left. Finding some room at midfield. That one good for 33 and a first. We've seen him break off a big run already in this game, and for a second, that one looked like it might be another. Yeah, I think that any defense would say, look, we can't let him get to the second level because sometimes he'll break off the big run on his own, but oftentimes you get additional blocking at the second level, which gets you deeper into the secondary. Keep on the ground with Jones. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. I'm wondering, partner, if they might need to sub him out for a play or two because after that long run he just had on the previous play, he might not have all of his breath back. Yeah, and they went right back to that well. Different result. Up. This is Williams, and inside the 20 before he's brought down. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary, and that led to a really nice game. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. It'll be a pickup of only a yard, and it's a second down. He'll look 
to throw toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was looking for the tight end, Lance Kendricks, there. And now it's third down. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. The Packers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and nine. They'll look to throw, and that is incomplete. I think that's a good job there defensively. They did allow them to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let them get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. And Crosby puts it through. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. So the drive stalls out, but they are able to put three points on the board. Yeah, just a yard or two shorter than an extra point. So no problems converting there. After the made field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. This one fielded at the five. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Heading back on the field is Jonathan Stewart. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. Second down, they run with Stewart. A very tough run, but for a short gain out near the 32. Only a yard on the pickup. And now they've got a third down and eight. Doesn't matter who you're rooting for in this game, the effort of the man with the football getting away from one and trying to turn forward and get some yardage, I really liked what he did there. on third down. Newton. It's caught. Shepard. 15 yards through the air and a first down. One of the selling points of the end route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. for four, maybe five, but the flags fly, and this one could be coming back. Holding offense. So on the big tight end, holding. 
Each and every year, we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college. So it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without holding. Shotgun snap for Newton. And they've got the hookup. This is Olsen. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Second down, McCaffrey. And, oh, he is really laid out that time. Knocked flat on his back. Right at the 45. No gain that time, and it leaves him with third and 11 coming up. He's fumbled already once, Charles. I'm not going to say that that was in his mind there, but I'm sure that during some of these plays, he is mindful of it. And once you fumble the ball, you know what your team tells you and your coaching staff? Take care of it. Rest of the game. And that does get in your mind a little bit, and sometimes that slows down your effort in trying to get free from tackles. And the defenders know it, too. They sniff that out, don't they? Everybody wants to swarm the football. You know what the rule is. First guy hold up the runner. Everyone else try and get there and strip the ball free. That one good for 15 and a first. And I know you can't really see it, but that play spells frustration with a capital F for the guys on defense. They covered everyone else, end up going to the running back out of the backfield, and he picks up a back-breaking first down. Short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short gain. start there that will set the offense back five yards Brandon the lineman certainly flinched there before the snap Start a good call offense. and that'll set him back five Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. McCaffrey following the penalty. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. It's a loss of four. Now third down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. The Panthers on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and 16. Back to throw. Newton. This is going to be incomplete. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot him. 
There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's in his own second quarter, already closing in on a 100-yard game. And that's the magic number for a running back. Anytime you get to that triple digits, that's all you're looking for. But he's got a chance to really exceed that in this one. Yeah, he does. That, that's been the gold standard for a long time, hasn't it, that 100-yard mark? It really has, and that never has to shift because it's in a game. It's a thousand yard mark. I'm wondering since we've gone from 12 to 14 to 16 games, maybe we need to up that a little. Out of the pistol to give to Jones. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Well, with the kind of half he's had, I think we can forgive him that run, right? Not every run's going to be a big play, is it? No, and also the blocking just wasn't there. No room to run. Yeah, defensively, they got to find a way to build on that because he's eating them alive in the first half. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Back with more from Charlotte after this. Coming up at halftime, remember, we'll get you out to Larry Ridley in Orlando for highlights and analysis of this first half. That is, of course, unless you decide to skip him. And for the record, we do not encourage that. And the offense moving in the wrong direction here now as they face a second and 12. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And an alley to run. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Call it a pickup of seven. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. The Packers on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and four. They'll set up a throw, and that is incomplete. I wonder, Brandon, I just wonder, you think maybe he was worried about where he was on the field? Was he far enough? Was he close enough to the first down sticks? Absolutely. He was right there by him, and I think he was thinking first down before he caught that football. Yeah, got to catch it first, because if you don't catch it, there's no chance of picking up a first down. On now is the Packers punter, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Good open field tackling there. A 50-yard punt followed by just a one-yard return. And the Panthers will take over now first and 10. Now Jonathan Stewart getting set to go as he trots back out there. Now the ground game's been good, but they're losing here in the second quarter. Can they use that ground game maybe to work the air attack a little bit more? I think so because now you can throw play action off of being able to run the ball effectively. And oftentimes, you might want to just swing your back out of the backfield, get the ball in his hands in open space, and just don't get totally away from running it because some of these runs now, they may pop bigger as the game goes along. Yeah, they've been good with a run so far. They start on the ground. This is Stewart on first. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Newton to throw. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense as he'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock.
On first down, Newton. They'll set up the screen for Stewart. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. Fresh set of downs here. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Neutral zone infraction, defense. Jumpy on the right side of the line. Sometimes when you're on the end, a little bit farther away from the ball, any type of movement will get you to jump, and that's exactly what happened there. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. First down, it's Newton. And some room to maneuver. Space to run past the 20. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaunt alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. So we've come to halftime here with the visiting Packers out on top as we'll send you down the coast to Orlando where we check in with our friend Larry Ridley and the EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? All right, Brandon, back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, let's get you caught up on all the highlights from the first half. The Panthers are behind right now, but the home crowd should give them a boost. The Packers have looked good on the road and will just try to keep the ball rolling in the second half. All right, let's get it going. Let's roll those first half highlights. First and 10, Jones is going to shift out to the right side, and he'll take this all the way for the touchdown. Third down, inches to go. Newton's going to use a stiff arm to get away. He'll pick up more than 10 yards on the play. Panthers would later fumble and turn the ball over. 
We go to the second. Stewart's got it on the run, and it cap off the nine play drop with the TD. Panthers now down by just three. That'll do it for us here at EA Sports Studios. Let's get back out to Brandon and Charles for the call of the second half. Brandon. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Set to return, this is Jeff Janis. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. The Packers offense now. They get ready to head back onto the field. And I would say they went three and out last time, but actually they didn't even get to three and out. Still a strange decision to us here in the booth. Yeah, let's hope they don't go one and out, but maybe, possibly, let's try and try and think with them here. Try to play field position, maybe. Turn the ball over, put it in the hands of their defense. Who knows? You're a nice man. <laughs> The second half starts with a carry by Jones. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. shotgun he'll look to throw and he completes it to Jordan Nelson and he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38 yard line it's a nine yard gain and it keeps the drive moving that was a nicely run slant route and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. The give is to Jones. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. Well, not to get too overcritical there, because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Second down now after the incompletion. Back to throw here. And his throw is incomplete. He was looking for his tight end Richard Rodgers that time. And it's third down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want. Get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. The Packers on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and ten. He'll drop to throw. And he's going to go down. 
They sack him back at the 42. Thomas Davis with a big time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. Well, that was an interesting little chess match there because the offense went empty set. No running backs in the backfield. So they're trying to get people out into a route pretty quickly. But guess what? The defense sees that. They go ahead and move, it, move themselves into a blitzing situation and come right after the quarterback. They had more guys there than they could block. On now is the Packers punter as he's on to kick it away. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> Newton on first down. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. And 15 yards there on the catch and run. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does, because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. On first and 10, Newton. This one complete to Devin Funches. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. And a nice gain at 21 yards. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. And now a first down following that long gain. the gun Newton quick hitter here it's complete and the stop here will come at the 38 yard line a gain of six there on first and that's one of his advantages of a passer is it now with his height setting back there in the pocket firing it over the middle he can really see everything clearly it is and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways all right you don't have to be his height to make a great play but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything. And sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. The Panthers on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. Here it's third and three. Here's Newton. Completes it to Dixon. And he's going to be run over. Hit hard as he'll be marked down. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. On first down, this is McCaffrey. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. 
tough running there. That's a hard earn four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. And they're six yards away from picking up the first here on second down. Again, they run. Again, it's McCaffrey. And a short gain here down to the 22. They'll give him a yard on the play. And just like that, it's third down. Well, praise has to go to the guys on the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game. And while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. The Panthers on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This will be third and five. From the gun, Newton out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And that's going to make it fourth down. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. So now off goes Newton, and on comes the kicker, Graham Gano. Right hash mark, a 42-yard attempt. And Gano's kick is right through. And that will cut the lead back down to three at 13 to 10. A decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvaged three out of it, but they do inch a bit closer. Yeah, still lots of time to go in this one. Take the points, move on, and let your defense try to get the ball back. Knocking through the field goal. Here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. This fielded at the two. And he'll get it up just past the 20, and his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. Start the drive with a carry by Jones. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. And the offense still has a couple plays to go to pick up the first on second down and three. They'll drop the throw. Nelson's got it here right side. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. So here we go, first and 10 now. Now a play fake here on first down. It gets it over the middle to Cobb. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Back-to-back -back nice plays. 12 yards that time and a first down. 
And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone sometimes you're throwing it between the zone sometimes the receiver is going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there it's a tough read but when they're in sync it's really effective. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Second down, nine yards to go. They'll go again to Jones. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It's a loss of two, now third down. Gardner, I think there's a lesson there. Some days you're just having a really tough time, and for the defense, today has been that day. But after that play, what do you learn? You can still make plays, even when the other guy's having success against you. The Packers on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This is third and 11. He'll look to throw. It'll be a two-yard game, and it'll be fourth down. the Packers punter as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. He gets this one away and boy it's another boomer. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17 yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. And after the field goal last time, let's see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. <laughs> they weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. They go play action here on first down. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. It's a four-yard pickup, and that'll bring up second down. off to Stewart and he'll be taken down right around the 27. It's a five yard gain but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. And there's a run to be happy with. Good solid yardage. He'll take that anytime you hand the ball to him back. The Panthers on third down. They've hit four of seven. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They'll try and run it. Here's Stewart. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. But it was stopped on that play. We've had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he's on to punt for Carolina. And that is. 
is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we're back now in Charlotte. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he's on to punt for Carolina. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. Getting set to go again as we look at the back, heading onto the field again. And there are the numbers. Got off to that torrid hot start. We thought he was in for maybe a career day. Not the case. No doubt about it. It almost looks like a misprint after what we saw in the first half. But let's give a little bit of credit to the guys on our side of the ball. They went into halftime, made a few adjustments. And you know what else? They didn't lose their confidence in how their ability to play. Because a lot of times you get beat down in the first half. It gets ugly in the second half. They've come out with a new resolve and a renewed determination. From deep in their own territory, they look to throw. Caught by Nelson left side. And he's out of bounds up past the 15-yard line. That'll go for a gain of 13, helping big time to get away from that end zone. First down. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there, didn't they? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They've got to go thank the guys on D. They'll run it now out of the gun. And an alley to run. Jones breaking from the contact. And he's brought down after a good game. A big hitter there. A first down gain of 26 yards. Do my eyes deceive me or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. On the counter, here's Jones. And he'll be knocked down sideways, right at the line of scrimmage. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. He's able to rattle off six on the carry, and that'll get him to third and four. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Out of the gun now on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. On now is the Packers punter. He's been terrific so far. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this one's out of bounds. Should be inside the 10, I think it is, at the six-yard line.
And the Panthers coming out now. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. And not great starting field position here for the offense. Now Newton on first down. And he'll get it up a little shy of the 15. They'll spot him down at the 14-yard line. Seven yards on the play, and that'll make it a second down. Swallowed up in the backfield. He lost four there, and it's third down. And on this play, the read for the quarterback was the defensive end, and he was totally focused on the quarterback. He should have given it off inside to the running back. Instead, he kept it and ended up taking a loss on the play. The Panthers on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and seven. The shotgun snap for Newton. And he will get the first down as he's up to the 20-yard line. Newton finding Funches for the Panther first down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing, and they got it done. Now a first down throw for Newton. He's got a man complete. It's Clay. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. The intended target that time, Britton Burson, and that'll bring up second down. But depending on the team, they call that an explosive play or a chunk play, the one that they got on the previous one. They tried to go back and get another one, didn't they? They did, but unsuccessful on that second attempt. On second and 10, Newton firing quickly here, and that's complete. A nice pick up there at 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Now that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. and 10. Newton. And he'll be brought down. It looks like right at the 40. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. 
Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five yard or a 15 yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. Now whistles, flag down, and I believe one of the Panthers got moving early. False start, offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Dropping the mistake by the offense, it cost him five yards, and now first and 15. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Neutral zone infraction, defense. A little antsy on the left side of the line. Yeah, I think they got the guy in the end. I think they got the DN there on that one. And let's face it, he is so amped up. Wanting to get a good get off on the snap. Jump too quickly. fake to Stewart. It's Newton. He's going to go up top for the end zone. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. Pass interference. Defense. This home crowd, they're happy with that call. <laughs> I like the way you said happy there, right? The so-called good guys didn't get a call. They feel like it's been that way all afternoon. You feeling their pain? They finally got one. Yes, they did. And here we go on first and goal. Following the penalty, here's Stewart. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Oh, partner, that play brought back memories. Watching them string it out, letting the runner get all the way to the sideline area, but not letting him get out of bounds. They formed that picket fence and didn't allow him through. Not only that, got him for a loss as well here. And one of the reasons they lead in the fourth quarter, plays like that. Yeah, it took a little more time off the clock, making him do it that way, didn't they? They come out here in the eye. Second and goal from the two-yard line. Trying to punch it in, Stewart. And he's going to go backward. They get him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that is going to set up third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. Two runs, two one-yard losses. This is third and goal from the three. Now whistles. Flag down, and I believe one of the Panthers got moving early. Offense. That was a third and somewhat manageable now, not so manageable. Exactly, because you had a play call on that you felt like, hey, this could go quick, and it doesn't take much to get it done. Now, you've got to start thinking about a little bit of a deeper route type of a call, especially if you want to throw it. They've been stuffed twice here for losses. Now it's third and goal. Operating from the gun, Newton, and that is incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? 
wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. And Gano's kick is right through. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. So you talk about clutch right down the pipe, and this game's all even here in the fourth. And he didn't leave much doubt there, did he? Good snap, good hold, and that one was dead center. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with them punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 15 yards through the air and a first down. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football before he knew it. He was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. Jones and maybe a measure of revenge there he's had his way in this one but this time they get him behind the line it'll wind up being a loss of two and they're going to be staring at a third and long here to throw and this is going to be incomplete everything about that play tells you about today's NFL offenses and what they're asking out of running backs you can't just be a guy who can run the football you have to be able to catch it as well and he didn't get that done on that play the Packers punter as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Forty six on his first kick this one in that neighborhood as well. So a change of possession here on the punt and the Panthers will have a first and ten from deep in their own territory. 
Now the Panthers offense, they get set to come back onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> you put it through the post, that's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, you're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that would help him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Bashed it. Super tall. <laughs> On first down, it's Newton. And an alley to run. And certainly some style points there on the spin. Not a whole lot thereafter, but still a pretty good game. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and it'll be second and about a yard to go for the first. here back at the 23 yard line it'll be a loss of one and that's going to bring up a third down that goes down as a loss against his rushing stats but really should he have to absorb that one he had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step This is third and two. Maybe the biggest play in this football game. Cam's going to run the option right. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. Give him four yards as he does it himself, and it's a first down. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with a defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. And the offense can string something together, but they'll need to do it quickly here to try to get points on the board and win this game. On first down, Newton. No gain on the play there. It'll be second down. Even score late in the fourth. Let's see if the defense can play within themselves, not give up the big play and contain, and keep this knotted up. So it's Panther football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And on second and ten now. Now Newton. And an alley to run. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Newton. And an alley to run. And he's going to be stopped dead in his tracks. It's an eight-yard pickup, and that'll make this a second down. Clock running here under 90 seconds to go. Now whistles. Flag down, and I believe one of the Panthers got moving early. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five.
And here comes play number six on this drive. Now it's Newton. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. There have been quite a few plays they might look back on and say, we really have hurt ourselves, and that was another example. And this is late game execution. Everything on the line, so it all has to come together properly. The throw is made. Where's the catch? Got to catch in that spot. The Panthers on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is third and seven. Newton to throw. Looking left side of him, he's got a man. It's Bird. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. Okay, there's three timeouts left, right? Think you got to use one here, don't no you? No doubt about it. I'd use one right here. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Now whistles. Flag down, and I believe one of the Panthers got moving early. So that'll back them up five. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. Newton going to hand it off to McCaffrey. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Now the Panthers going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. stay on the ground this time it's Stewart and again the run defense stout this time he maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage but no more This offense, two for two on third downs on this drive. They're in for a tough test here, though. Third and long. They'll give it up to McCaffrey. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. And now a timeout coming from the defensive side for the Packers. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready.
So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This to take the lead here in the final minute. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And a costly one there as this game remains tied here in the fourth. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. They can still get into field goal range, partner. They got to work quickly, though. I agree with you totally. Find a way to get the ball downfield and out of bounds. In a perfect world, they know what hash they want to get to for their kicker, and they already know the distance that he feels comfortable. That'll dictate what they do on offense. See if they can get in his range. Throwing here to start the drive. Room here to run. And he's brought down. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in the football game. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Here's Jones. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. They'll wind up losing four yards on the play. And that's going to make it second and 14. That's complete to his tight end. This is Lance Kendricks. And we have free football over time. Here we go, my friend. And the way this game played out, this is exactly how it should end, going to overtime, because neither one got an advantage today. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. The Packers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. Except for their first drive here in overtime. And this is where the crowd can really become a factor. They've had to battle it all day, but I know what you're saying. In overtime, that gets doubled, doesn't it, at least, because now the crowd really wants to be involved and help their team, and that first drive can dictate the whole thing because they know if this team takes it downfield and scores a touchdown, it's game over. It's been loud in here so far. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Give him two yards on that play, and that'll make it second down. Jones and maybe a measure of revenge there he's had his way in this one but this time they get him behind the line 
It'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. He's had some big runs in this game. Not there, though. But I don't think they're going to be deterred by that play right there. He's had some nice runs in the game. And how many times have we seen a good running back get stopped, yet turn it into something big on a later carry? I'd stay with him. The Packers on third down. Just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. This is third and 11. Now a first throw here in overtime. He's got his target, it's Cobb. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A gain of 39 that time. They picked up a first down and a whole lot more. Forget about just looking for the sticks. They went well beyond the stick. I know they were talking about guarding the sticks on defense. They didn't guard them very well. They got a big-time completion on a third down. That's almost a backbreaker, isn't it? In overtime, every play's importance is magnified, and that one could turn out to be huge. First down carry by Jones. Now Jones is hit. He lost the football. But it looked like a Packer. Yeah, a Packer was able to get this back, and they'll indeed keep possession. That hold coming from the middle of the line, the center. And it's difficult for him because sometimes you've got people right over you, and as soon as you snap it, trying to get your hands up and block them, you can be a little bit late getting it done. And the penalty now makes it first and 20. They're going to look to throw. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Give him six on the play, and it'll bring up a second and 14. Offense needs something here on second down. It is second and long. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. That's caught by Geronimo Allison. And he's going to be taken down, but not before reaching the 15-yard line. A good pick up there, 26 yards. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. So it looks like somebody may have forgotten the snap count, and a five-yard penalty ensues. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. So the penalty by the offense, and now they face a first and 15. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Four yards on the pickup, and it'll be second and 11. bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. They'll set up a throw. Yeah, a quick throw here, that's complete. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down.
Coming up on a third and nine. Opening drive of overtime as they look to convert. Back to throw here. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Call it a three-yard gain, and that'll bring up fourth down. So a big spot now for Crosby, but he's been here before. And Crosby puts it through. And with that, they will move out in front by three. All right, so they're able to put three on the board here on the opening drive of OT. And now it'll be up to their defense to try and see this one out. So remember now, a field goal on this next drive would get us to sudden death. Any kind of turnover or turnover on downs would end the game, as would any touchdown. So this one's still very much up in the air. After the made field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. This is taken at the three. Oh, good move. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. The field goal would push it to sudden death. We just saw the field goal on the other end, but I don't think they are thinking field goal. At least not to start this drive, they're not thinking field goal. Not at all, because your point is well taken. Yeah, kick the field goal, you push it to sudden death, but you're also kicking off and giving the other team the ball with a chance to kick a field goal and beat you. Get the touchdown, finish the game off. That has to be the mindset. First throw in overtime for Newton. And this is Shepard on the catch. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. First down. Wide open receiver complete. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. It doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I they move. And they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary. And I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open probably because of his movement out of the pocket. Back to throw, Newton. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. It'll be a three-yard gain, and it'll make it second down. a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? I got you, 
Now whistles. Flag down, and I believe one of the Panthers got moving early. False start. Offense. So that one will be accepted. types of plays we're always looking to assess blame okay where did it break down sometimes it's just a great play Second down is Newton. He'll drop it off to McCaffrey. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. the gun. Here's Newton. And that is incomplete. Timing's crucial in any route thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback. Are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to potentially keep this game alive at OT. And now the Packers going to take another timeout. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to potentially keep this game alive at OT. And he got it. It's good. They answer with a field goal of their own to send this game into sudden death. Well, this one certainly has not lacked for intrigue. What do you say we keep on playing, partner? Well, it's okay by me, Brandon. That is yet another pressure field goal right there. Each guy's made one here in this overtime. And from here on out, it'll be the next score that wins. So each team's had it. Each team's put up three. It's sudden death now, and here we go. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. The situation is simple. It is sudden death from here on out. We had two stops defensively. 
The next score, whatever it is, wins this game. I can't wait to see how the defense decides to play this because knowing that the next points you give up lose the game for you, I expect them to be more aggressive, not just play a normal situational defense, but go after them, attack them a little bit because otherwise the offense is just trying to find their way to get downfield and kick a field goal. Don't sit back and wait for them to make their plays. I think the defense needs to go after them. Charles Davis says maybe they go aggressive. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Devontae Adams, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Another nice job there defensively. They've really stymied their passing attempts, and it continues in overtime. And for them to do that, that means they've had to be cohesive on defense. Pressure in the quarterback's face. Good coverage of not just the, the wide receivers, but the tight end, the running backs when they try and slip out, and making sure they're at the point of attack. When the ball's in the air, they get there and help force some of those incompletions. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. Pretty good running there, nine yards. Sets up a third and one. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. And the Panthers bring in their nickel set as they try to defend here on third down. Five defensive backs. They'll drop to throw. Got a man, it's his tight end, Lance Kendricks. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. This is Jones. And he'll be tackled right on the midfield logo. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Again, it's Jones. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he's brought down. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Really good, skillful, tough running throughout this contest. Picked up first down after first down. He's got to have a nickname, doesn't he? How about the human first down machine? I think that fits. down carry it's Williams and he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain five yards on the carry good pickup on first down that's a strong pickup right there on first down and as this drive goes on we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will second down following the run Again, it's Williams. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. And I know you, with every carry, especially in overtime, you're just saying, if you're that ball carrier, hold on to the football. Hold on to it, protect it, but not necessarily settling because you're trying to get to the end zone. You're trying to end the game right here. And I know the defensive guys poking, clawing, breaking, trying to knock the ball free and protect their end zone. Yeah, like you alluded to, especially this part of the field. The Panthers are going to take another timeout. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. 
The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. So the game here hangs on the right foot of Mason Crosby. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. We thought this game would be a good one. It did not disappoint in overtime. And it took the field goal to win it. And we always pay lip service to how important it is to play defense. And usually we focus on the big offensive pyrotechnics, right? But in this case, they got the ball back on defense, gave themselves a chance, and they capitalized on it with a victory. And I don't care what distance that field goes from in overtime. The knees are always knocking, but he pushed it through. <laughs> Not only that, think about your snapper, your holder. A lot of nerves for them, too, because they have to do their job in order to give him one last chance to put a foot to it. That'll do it for us. I'm Brandon Gordon, alongside Charles Davis. Thanks to our entire crew as well. We'll talk to you next time. So long, everybody.